Hi everyone, just a few days ago Microsoft released a small open source model called Phi 3.5. In the benchmarks it seems to be close to other small models like Llama 3.1. Many people seem to jump on a wow awesome you can run these models on your laptop wagon, but my opinion is different. For me these small models belong into the trash bin if you want to do anything serious. Also large models like Llama 3.1 with 405 billion parameters which appear to be as good as let's say GPT 4.0 are inferior for 99% of use cases I can think of. Before you download this video, because you love your local Llama on your computer, let me explain by example. I'm gonna show you examples of Phi 3.5, Llama 3.1 and GPT-40 Mini in comparison side by side for categories like coding and math. I will also touch the often upcoming yes, but we work with private data so we have to use an open source model topic. So let's start with the models itself. Phi 3.5 is a lightweight model trained by Microsoft. It supports a context window of 128k tokens and should be able to handle tasks like retrieval, summarization, Q&A and more. It's a very small model with only 2.2 gigabytes. Llama 3.1 was trained by Meta and comes in three different sizes. 8 billion parameters, 70 billion parameters and 405 billion parameters. You will probably only be able to run the 8 billion parameters model on your local machine. The 8 billion parameters model has got a size of 4.7 gigabytes, so it's twice the size as Phi 3.5. GPT-40 Mini is not free. It costs 15 cents for 1 million input tokens and 60 cents for 1 million output tokens. If you use the batch API, it's only half the price. Okay, so now let's make a side-by-side -side comparison of the three models. So the first task was about logical reasoning. So if a train travels at 60 km per hour for two hours, and 80 km per hour for another 3 hours, what is the total distance covered? As you can see, this is the answer of phi 3.5 and the answer of phi is 360 km. It gives a nice step-by-step -step explanation for the result and is able to calculate it correctly. Llama 3.1 is also able to answer that correctly, but the answer is a little bit more concise, so in my opinion, the answer by Llama is a little bit better overall. GPT-40 Mini is also able to handle that correctly, the answer is a little bit longer, but in general all three models have been able to answer that very easy task correctly. The second part was about language understanding. So I let GPT-40 generate a text about a cat and a dog in English and wanted it to translate it to German. I know most of you don't speak German, only a small part of my audience is German, but I think the translation between these two languages is quite nice to test the abilities for language understanding because we've got a lot of so-called false friends in German, which sounds like a correct translation of an English word, but actually means something totally different. Let's first have a look at the translation of Phi 3.5 and if I read this, I have a hard time understanding the text in German because some words don't exist or just were not translated, so purring is not a German word. Seufzere, I don't have no idea what this means. And in general, the, the text just reads like being written from a person that learned German half a year ago, so, so the quality is very, very bad in my opinion. Now let's have a look at the translation of the Llama 3.1 model. So this translation is much better, but it still makes some mistakes and sounds not really well-rounded. So here are some clear uh, grammatic mistakes, like ein stiller Verständnis, there should be an S, and here in, uh, for example we've got obwohl sie in vielfachen Weisen, there is an N, too much. Yeah, but in general you understand it. When you read the text, you get what it's about. So the translation is not totally wrong. So the last one is the translation of GPT-40 Mini. And this is by far the best translation. There is no clear mistake. I would change one or two words like stocherte with its nose to stupste, but in general it's a very good translation. You could easily just use it as it is. Okay, so in this comparison we've got a clear winner and we also got a clear loser. GPT-40 Mini is a very good model for translating text. It does not make any obvious mistakes, but the Phi 3.5 model is just not usable for translation. The quality is ridiculous. So yeah, to be honest, I'm actually quite shocked about the result. Okay, so the third task I was curious about was the model's coding abilities. So I wanted the LLMs to create a class with Python. It should create a dog. It should be able to bark three times. And after that, it has to drink water before it can bark three times again. So I wanted the LLM to write the code for that. Okay, we're first gonna have a look at the Phi 3.5 model. So it created a class. It also set an attribute in the constructor, which is can bark, and initially it's true. So that's totally correct. But then it gets a little bit wild. So we've got two methods, drink and bark, which is still fine. And 
now it checks in the drink method for the attribute last drink, but this attribute never gets used. It also makes use of time.time, .time, which to be honest, I don't know the idea behind that because it was not in the requirement. And if you have a look at the code itself, that's not Pythonic code. It makes use of has attribute, which may or may not be correct, but in general, it's not Pythonic code. You don't access attributes like this in Python code. So I had a hard time even understanding what's going on here. Maybe 5.3.5 is just too clever for me and I'm just too stupid to understand that code. But yeah, to be honest, if I execute the code, it does not even work. So again, quite a disappointing result. Okay, maybe Llama 3.1 is up to the task. We've got a doc class, we've got an attribute in a constructor water drunk, and that is initially false. We've got our bark method and the method prints woof. Okay, so far so good, but this water drunk attribute is never used to force the dog to drink before it can bark again. So Llama 3.1 is also not up to the task, but at least the code is more readable and does not produce an error, but still a little bit disappointing. Okay, now let's have a look at the last model GPT-40 mini, and that's its dog class. As you can see, we've got our dog class again, and in the constructor, we now have a name, which was not required, but it's not wrong. We've got barks remaining, which is initially three. So that's the only model that takes this into consideration. The bark method checks if barks remaining is larger than zero, and then we are able to say woof, and we reduce the number of barks remaining by one. It also uses an F string, uses the name attribute, for the statement and I think that code is actually pretty good. So I don't see any obvious way to improve it. So that's the result of the code. So Buddy is able to say woof three times. Then we get the message that Buddy needs to drink water before barking again. Buddy drinks water and is able to say woof again. So gpt 4 me was totally up to that task. It produced, I would say, perfect code and I'm very, very satisfied with that result. Okay, so the last task for that model was a mathematical task. So I wanted it to solve 2x plus 3x equals 10. So what is x? And this is the result of phi 3.1. So the result, I think that's quite easy, is 2. That's correct. But if you have a look at the explanation, so it uses abbreviations like LHS and RHS and does not explain it anywhere. So I think that's not very good. And in general, I find the text quite convoluted. Lama 3.1 was also able to solve that equation, but in general, the explanation is far easier and I think it did a much better job than phi 3.5. GPT-40 mini was also able to solve the equation, and I think it also did a nice job of explaining how it came up with that result. Okay, so I think we got a clear winner, and that's GPT-40 mini. It is the only model that came up with four satisfying solutions. Llama 3.1 follows a second place, and yes, for easy task, it may have its merits, but phi 3.5 is just unusable. The text output is convoluted, even if the answer is correct, which, to be honest, that's rarely the case. So in my opinion, the model is trash. Don't use it. If you want to use a local model on your computer, then please use at least Llama 3.1, but 5.5 is not usable. But okay, I know, I know you've got private data of customers that you don't want to send to OpenAI. Totally understandable. So I work in one of the highest regulated spaces in the world, which is the finance space in Germany. And we just solve that by using Microsoft Azure with a private endpoint. So data transfer is safe there. It is not accessible by the outside internet. But even if you still want to use Llama, you need to know you are responsible for hosting it somewhere and that's not free. GPUs are very, very expensive. If you want to rent a server that is capable of running a model like Llama 3.5 with 405 billion tokens, you may pay like $1,250 per month. This is equal to 8 billion tokens with GPT-40 mini. And 8 billion tokens is a lot. And I think many people who use the prices argument heavily overestimate the usage of a chatbot. The next question I would have is, how would you handle upgrading a model without service downtime? So if you want to change, let's say from Llama to another open source model. If I want to upgrade to let's say GPT-5, I just need to change an API key. If anything doesn't work, we get support by Microsoft. We don't need a team which is responsible for maintaining the model, upgrading it, etc, etc. So in my opinion, it just makes far more sense to use a proprietary model like the models from OpenAI or Claude. But okay, that's just my opinion about open source models and please let me know in the comments what you think about this topic. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye.